practice model uh, demonstrating a few uh, a few key areas that uh, have had some interior elevation issues before. So here I've got a vaulted ceiling. Uh, in the kitchen I've got a flat ceiling. And then looking in the floor plan I've also got kind of this alcove. So like a butler's pantry or like a, an alcove seat um, taking elevations of the island as well as the cabinets. Um, so the first thing to do is to go to the interior elevation settings. Uh, and if you're working from my template or any uh, good quality template, um, there's going to be a favorite for interior elevations. Um, and before we even place the marker, we want to make sure that it's referencing the first place drawing of a view or viewpoint. Um, you can pull the reference ID from Autotext for interior elevations, which is different from any other marker. Uh, and this is actually a great solution because you don't have to go through and individually name and number the interior elevations. Um, it's going to automatically pull from the zone name and from the, the orientation uh, of your project. Um, so north, south, east, west. There's an there's orientation short, which would just be NSEW or full orientation. Um, and then as far as referencing the correct content, there's inner and outer text. Uh, here we actually want to turn um, the inner text to uh, reference the drawing ID. So that's the individual drawing on the sheet. And then the inner text uh, should only reference the layout. So we want to make sure that we turn the drawing ID off there because there's going to be multiple drawings for one layout. So here this is going to reference the layout that these drawings are placed to. Um, the other thing uh, is the horizontal range and the vertical range. Um, and typically I set the vertical range to limited. Uh, I set that to like negative 0.5 inches below uh, the current story and maybe make it like 12 feet or something like that. Um, and you can certainly adjust that later on. I've, I've never had great luck with the detect and fit to zones. Um, so once all of that's set up, we just need to place these markers. Um, and these should typically be placed to either the face of finish or face of stud, depending on what you want the boundary of your elevation to look like. In this case, I'm going to place it to the face of the finish here. Um, so that's the, the boundary extents, and then I offset it back to the, uh, uh, to the cut line for these elevations. So I'm just going to place a few markers here. So here's the one for the what I'm calling the dining room zone. I can offset the marker up using that pet palette. Uh, let's place some for the kitchen. So again, here I'm going to place one in the kitchen. Um, and I want these to all be uh, kind of nicely set to the face of finish. Um, Oops, that's not what I was trying to do. I want the, I think I eyedropper the wrong tool there. Make sure we've got the interior elevation tool. Um, so I'm going to draw these out to face of finish and face of finish. Um, and then once I have it placed, I can even adjust the boundary extent. So for example, on this one, uh, I can extend the elevation to the next face of finish here. The thing that you don't want is you don't want these to overlap multiple zones um, and you don't want them to be non-rectangular. Um, so if I were to add an additional node in here, uh, my drawing would not be referencing um, uh, basically the individual, draw the individual drawings. So you have to have only four elevations or less. Um, now I can actually remove an elevation. Um, you, know, you could select an individual elevation and move it or delete it even. Um, but in this case, I want all of these elevations. Um, and then, uh, so this will be my kitchen elevation. Um, and then I have the butler's pantry elevation. So again, face of finish to face of finish. Offsetting those back. Um, in this case, it might make sense to actually delete one of these elevations. I don't need the elevation looking that way, so I'm going to delete that. Um, and in the case of the kitchen elevation here, I do want this full wall, so I'm going to delete that from this elevation um, and draw a new elevation from here to here. So it can be kind of pieced together this way with multiple markers. Um, you know, whatever makes sense for the, the graphics of the plan, but also keeping in mind the limitations of these markers. Um, so here I'm going to delete the unwanted markers for this elevation, just showing this one elevation. And then lastly, the kitchen island. Um, I'm going to place elevations around that kitchen island. 
um, and I'm just going to offset them in. Um, but keep in mind that these are now looking away from the island, so I now have to select these individual elevations and drag them uh, to the opposite sides. So they're looking towards the elevation. Um, the other thing that I can do uh, with this elevation, um, because this is specifically the island, I can say zone name and add some manual text in here, so that it's not just the um, it's not just saying kitchen and orientation; it's saying kitchen, island, north, south, east, west. So now I have all of those elevations placed. Once those are placed, I'm going to pull up the organizer. Um, and in the organizer, oops, a second, um, I'm going to pull up the project map, go to my interior elevations, uh, and I'm going to save those to my first floor elevations. Uh, first, I'm going to set the scale correctly to half inch, entire model, interior elevation, layer combination, um, using all the correct view settings, um, and then just save views. So now those views are available here. I have kitchen. Kitchen Island, Butler's Pantry, I have the additional kitchen, um, so that's the west, these are the uh, east, north, south, uh, and then the dining room elevations. Um, now using the organizer again, I can come into the layout book um, and open up an interior elevation here. Um, from the view map in the left column, I'm going to place these elevations onto that layout. So go ahead and place drawings. Um, takes a few minutes to process all of these. Almost done here. Okay, there we go. So there's all my kitchen elevations. Uh, you can see that they actually had to be placed to multiple sheets, um, but I'm pretty sure all of these should be able to fit on a single sheet. So I'm just going to move these to that sheet. Um, and then the order that these show up on is the order that they're going to be numbered on that sheet. So here I have kitchen east, north, south. I'm going to move the kitchen west to group with those. Um, and then I have the butler's pantry, I have the kitchen island separately, and then I have the dining room separately. Um, now if I close out of this, I can move these around on the sheet and get them to organize and, and fit on the sheet properly. Um, but that's generally, as long as the uh, elevation is placed correctly to the zone, I should even be able to give this like a um, three quarters of an inch offset. And I have a nice clean boundary around the edge. Um, you know, you might need to clean up the placement here. It looks like I have a, a section line going right through some of my um, some of my sconces. Um, there are also times when, um, especially with vaulted elevations, uh, let's pull up. Uh, actually, the dining room is the one that that should be vaulted. Uh, this one, I would adjust the height of the elevation to stop at the ceiling line a little more precisely. Um, so let's find. Uh, one of the dining rooms. Um, oh, here's the dining room. Um, oh, here. I think this is the one. Yeah, so this is kind of the fine tuning that has to be done on the elevations. Uh, if I open up this source view, notice that it's actually cropping off that ceiling. Um, so I need to go back into um, that elevation marker and raise it up. So I'd come into the settings here, and maybe this is like 15 feet or something like that. Uh, now when I look at this, 
I get that full elevation height. And this is one of the only times that I've ever used um, masking on an interior elevation is when you have vaulted ceilings like this. Um, you don't want to see the full ceiling thickness. So I've uh, actually been in the habit of drawing a fill over the whole thing. Um, let's make it temporarily transparent and empty fill. Um, and if you subtract out the area in the middle, and I'm being a little bit uh, sloppy with this, but um, you can be pretty precise with that. And then give it a white fill and then you mask out that ceiling line so it gives you that nice clean elevation. Um, now as far as the, the drawing references go, as long as the markers are set up correctly, uh, these drawings are going to automatically uh, reference those drawings on that layout. Um, you know, so if I do realize that some of these need to go to the um, to the next layout over, um, and this is another actually kind of valid point, is usually I set interior elevations to manually update, so you don't have to wait for this to process every time. Um, and to do that, you can just go to the drawings, uh, select the drawings, and go to the settings, and set the update here to manual. Uh, so the next time you go to open up a, a page, it's gonna um, it's gonna process it quicker. Uh, you do have to remember to update those drawings. But now, if I go to, for example, move the dining room back to uh, sheet uh, seven point two, um, my floor plan. First of all, they move there uh, automatically. Uh, and then my floor plan actually references that drawing correctly. So again, the settings at the marker level for referencing um, the correct drawing is you want to make sure that it's referencing the first place drawing of the viewpoint, um, and then the inner and outer text are referencing the drawing and the drawing layout. So that's kind of the, the overall summary of how to place and manage interior elevations. Um, any questions uh, beyond that? Sure, let's, um, let's just lay out an example here. So if we have a room, something more like this, right? Um, just like we looked at um, on this elevation where this one had to be separated out uh, from, uh, from the rest of it, um, you know, I would still start with the square elevation marker. And I would say that my room extents are from here to here. And I would offset this back until those elevations are correctly showing uh, and and maybe even move this back here and make sure that this one is so you're, you're getting par a partial elevation of this piece at an angle uh, but then what I've always done is I've, I've gone in and drawn just a single elevation of that piece um, so yeah, so let me let me undo that. Um, so in the uh, info box here, this palette right here, uh, whoops, let me make sure that I've got the elevation marker, not the wall tool. Uh, so there's different geometry methods, and I would never use the, the pentagonal method <clears throat> uh, because you end up with those missing references on the outside. You could do a rotated a rectangle, a rectangle, or an individual single marker. Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to draw a single marker right here. And offset it back. So now that's that uh, elevation. And you always end up like this kind of weird, like it's actually looking that direction, but it's that elevation. I I haven't ha found a great solution for that, unfortunately. Even even if I start with, um, let's say, like a, a rotated rectangle here. You know, you you define the reference line. So it's referencing that point, offsetting it back offsetting these edges. It still points north, south, east, west. There's, uh, unfortunately, there's no easy way to, to reference that 45 degree angle without changing the appearance of the marker. I mean, you can certainly look at different marker types, but I've always just sort of had this compromise where that elevation is referencing that drawing. Um, 
you know, and then assume that that people can kind of sort it out from there. The the other option is to say that we're going to go rather than a common interior elevation, we're going to use um, one of these other marker types. Um, and I'm forgetting which one it is, but one of these will actually allow you to have a rotation to it. Um, not that one apparently. Uh, I know that there is one that will allow you to have a rotated view. Um, the other thing you can do is you could set it to an individual marker for each elevation, um, and that will be rotated. But then your your standard for having the drawing ID on the outside and the layout ID on the inside is kind of all screwed up because there is no, for this marker type, I don't think there is an inner and outer text, just first row and second row. So you could set the first row to reference the drawing, the second row to reference the uh, layout. So the second row references the layout, the first row references the drawing, or not the zone number, um, the drawing ID and the layout ID. Um, so that's the other way you can handle this, but it's a different graphic. You know, this is more of like the exterior elevation marker as opposed to the standard interior elevation marker. So that could be the other compromise, is to use a different marker type. Mm -hmm. um, not really, just uh, it's just kind of force a habit. Yeah, if, if I wanted just that elevation, I, I would first eyedropper that elevation so I get those settings uh, and you don't end up with this marker instead because the default for this marker is uh, the single elevation is this other marker, the individual marker. And you don't want to use the individual marker, even though it is a standalone elevation. Um, and I'm referencing, and, and this might be actually what Reed was running into, is like it's referencing the wrong thing, so I have to actually make sure that this is not custom text, it's actually referencing the drawing in each of these. Um, but again, this is this is the incorrect marker type, according to kind of the, the standard that I have set up for these markers. Um, so that's kind of the reason that I've used that method is because it's the easiest way to ensure that I have some kind of global or universal graphic for my inter elevation markers. Other questions? Okay, well, I am going to save this uh, video really quick and. Um, Jeff, I'll load this onto um, the Slack channel so Reed can actually watch this later on. Oh, no 